Now, Ernst & Young's 2012 Global Fraud Survey has shown that 15% of senior executives are polled at leading companies around the world are willing to make cash payments to win or retain business. The statistic is up from 9% in 2010 to unpack some of the trends we're seeing. Sharon Van Royen, Director of Fraud and Investigation and Dispute Services at Ernst & Young, joining me to uh, look into the survey. Sharon, Interesting trend that we've seen there. Why is this so? Any reasons for this that uh, Ernst & Young has been able to unveil that they, we've been sick up, seen a tick up rather in the number of, uh, of CEOs or number of executives that are willing to uh, commit bribery or fraud? Well, thank you for that. Uh, if you have a look at the adverse economic environment that um, companies are operating in, a lot of companies are struggling to survive and grow. So I guess there's a tendency to conduct unethical behaviour. Sometimes growth and business ethics, people tend to believe that they are, not, are competing priorities. You probably see um, and up from our previous server in 2010, um, when, as you said, was significantly lower. What I would like to say, though, that is a survey that shows 15% of executives globally. Fortunately, in South Africa and Africa, we're seeing that executives, um, when they're looking at unethical behavior that they're willing to tolerate, cash payments seem to be significantly less. Yep. It's more about entertainment um, and gifts that they would look at to so, justify. So seen as softer ways to win yes. business and perhaps uh, you know, entice uh, clients to do business with you. Uh, let's talk about South Africa then and the perception around corruption here because it seems that South Africans uh, believe that corruption is widespread. 64% of them believe corruption is widespread. Uh, that's versus the likes of Brazil where 84% of respondents saw corruption widespread. Nigeria is sitting at 72%. How does South Africa fare when it comes to perce per uh, perception of corruption? Okay, well, if you have a look at and take a step back, uh, most of the mature markets, the perception of corruption there is a lot lower. If you have a look at what the globe felt, um, the global respondents, they said 39% felt that there was corruption in, uh, in their countries. So if you look at South Africa, which is also considered to be a rapid growth market, there's a tendency in all of the rapid growth markets, like, such as the ones that you've mentioned, to have um, a higher perception of bribery and corruption in those countries countries. Yes, so it's significantly higher than gl the global norm, but as you said, it's not the highest, um, but it is certainly cause for concern. If corrupt practices or corrupt behaviour is found within a company, how willing did the uh, survey respondents appear to be in South Africa to actually uh, take action against those? Well, what is very interesting in South Africa and very positive, if you look at the worldwide trends, most South African companies survey, they've got anti-bribery and corruption policies and code of ethics in place. The tone at the top seems to be fine and um, they, they clearly show that they will be penalised. But what does dilute that tone at the top, unfortunately, is the whether these people eventually do get penalised. And 64% of the respondents said in the cases that they've seen, that, um, yes, people get penalised, but what about the remainder of the respondents? Africa is pretty similar in South African states, and you would see um, that it is fortunately a little bit higher than what the global average is, where that was sitting at about 40%, where people get penalised. What about whistleblowers right now, and the encouragement of whistleblowers, and uh, the attitude towards uh, fostering that type of culture within your company right now and uh, encouraging people to actually come out and say if uh, something's going wrong within the company. Well, you'll also see in the survey, which is very interesting, is um, South Africa and Africa, probably the respondents, they use whistleblowing hotlines a lot more than the rest of the globe, which is positive. You'll see, have seen media um, articles and press about whistleblowers and, you know, the, the fear of retaliation. So there's a lot to be done there. But if you look at the survey, um, especially South African and African respondents, they thought what is going on in the States at the moment, they've passed a Dodd-Frank Act, which actually compensates certain types of whistleblowers if they um, give original information, which may result in fines. They can get compensated up to 30% of that fine um, if it exceeds one million US dollars. So a lot of um, South African respondents were very favor thought that that was a good idea and it should be something that we should look into in South Africa and obviously the rest of Africa. So compensation yeah. for whistleblowing. Yeah, that, that is a positive trend. Uh, overall, how do you hope this survey is used in South Africa to 
kind of stamp out corruption, stamp out bribery, stamp out fraud that does exist still in the business environment? Well, what I hope to see uh, show the trends that this work that has been done, there's been positive work that's been done, but uh, clearly not enough. Um, if you've got an anti-bribery and corruption policy in place, that's fantastic, but how effective is it? The tone at the top looks good, but are you penalising those individuals? Um, and also, are you looking at other initiatives just to see, for example, using data analytics to actually show, ensure that you are complying with legislation and so forth, especially when it relates to third parties. So we're doing a lot of positive things, but there's a lot of things that we should be doing, um, and just putting a policy in place is not going to be enough. And yep. we're going to have to change the culture, but that's not going to happen overnight. And also there's the risk of uh, doing business with a business that is corrupt, that is uh, what, you know, I involved in something that's uh, undercover. Uh, so, so what about uh, the, uh, the implications of that? Surely that would be a risk as you have heightened regulation, the due diligence process, or if you're going to make an acquisition or just do business with someone in another country, you need to understand uh, you know, how clean their business is. Absolutely, and you've mentioned two things. It's dealing with third parties that help you in your business, third parties and agents, and most local the local legislation and Foreign Corrupt Practices Act, the UK Bribery Act, they all say that that if a third party acting on your behalf um, is involved in corrupt practices, you can be held liable as a company. So you have to do undergo proper due Is that in South Africa? That, that type it, of regulation? That type of regulation is, remember bribery and corruption with the South African piece of legislation has also got extraterritorial jurisdiction. So what it means is if one of your um, parties is actually involved in corrupt practices in other parts of Africa, they could actually be um, penalised and uh, action taken here in South Africa. So you have to look broadly at uh, your entire supply chain and all the businesses that you're yes. currently doing business with. Thank you so much right. for unpacking the survey for us. That was Sharon van Roy. Director of Fraud and Investigation and Dispute Services at Ernst & Young.